Hello, everyone. Perry here again with another San Diego Comic-Con exclusive for you. I have the team behind Nosferatu right here on the set. I'm very into the show, but I want to start off with you, Joe, right now, because everybody at Collider knows I am addicted to audiobooks, and I'm just fascinated by the adaptation process, and in particular, what it's like when you either watch a movie or a show before reading the book, or vice versa. So in your opinion, what is the ideal way to consume both forms of this story? I, I don't know that there is an ideal way, you know? I mean, sometimes it's great to read the book first and then see how they realize it on the screen but you know I, uh, I actually saw Handmaid's Tale before I read the book um, and found that the, in some ways the TV show informed the experience of reading the book in a really interesting way so I don't know if there's any wrong way to come to a story. I, l I was hoping you would tell me watch the show first and then read the book because that's my watch plan. the show first or, and then read the book. Thank you or listen to an audio. You guys should do the audio book actually. You know, I'm, I'm sure whoever I think narrated these two is great. Would be, I think <laughs> these two would be great at audio books, and I definitely think they should find the find it. You know, read for someone, do some stories. <laughs> I think that um, <laughs> there's something interesting about for our show. I think there's something interesting about reading the book while you're watching the show actually because yeah. there's. Like, I can't tell you how many times in the course of shooting the first season of the show where I'd be, like, driving and I'd be like, wait a minute, did that happen in the show or in the mm -hmm. book? Like, there's so many overlaps and overlays and things that are, you know, echoes of the book in the show and echoes of the show in the book. And, like, there's this real symbiotic kind of, like, they're very similar, but they also are very unique. And, uh, and so I feel like for, for somebody who hasn't come to the experience of Nosferatu at all, that like the duality of those two could be really interesting so that you could do them at the same time. Something I've never done before. See? So now I kind of want to. Try you. something new. Yeah, really. Right? I like that. Um, anyone can feel free to chime in on this. I am just fascinated by seeing happy things like Christmas and clowns subverted into something that's absolutely terrifying. So would you agree with that? Are you guys really into whether it's uh, Christmas land in this case? I'm also really into things like Grilla and Krampus. Yeah, I mean, clowns are terrifying. Just look at the president. Oh, no? Yes. The, uh, Awkward the, uh, silence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Way to ruin the buzz, huh? No, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, um, I think that that's sort of the job of horror fiction is to take the stuff we love and trust and then ruin it for everyone. Are you guys uh, into any uh, any specific thing that would really freak you out that's really happy in your life right now that if it became like a Christmas land, it might get under your skin a little too much? I feel like my dog. I was just going to say the same thing. Like oh, a no. vicious pug, I think, would. That's I think really I, I think that would upset me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now I'm picturing Cujo. Like, what yeah. said bastard would write about an evil dog? <laughs> <laughs> really? Or an evil pug. Like, <laughs> pug specifically. <laughs> yeah. Jumping off of that. Have you guys ever thought of what your inscape and knife might be? Because that's just something that's been going through my head a lot since I started watching the show. What's your inscape? I don't know. I like I just I really love Elton John and <laughs> I feel like it would have to be like maybe I'd fly through like an Elton John land like a skyscape of just like crazy glasses and sequins and like head pieces and I'd arrive at some magical destination where all the music was Elton's music. I think that's probably probably where I sit. <coughs> that's a beautiful picture to have painted. Thank you. I don't know, I don't know what the Rocket superpower Man. is. But <laughs> I was, that's what I was, was that? I said it's also called Rocket Man. I wish I've seen six times. <laughs> you have six times? Yes. Wow. I'm going to try and see it again. So good. I don't blame Tonight. you. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Anything come to mind? Um, somebody asked me this before and I gave a really boring answer, so I was trying to think of a more interesting answer. I don't think I can top Rocket Man. Um, maybe an Old West town? I like westerns. Maybe an Old West town. Okay. I'm taking my Mini Cooper and I'm driving into Halloween Town <laughs> from Nightmare Before Christmas and I'm very happy go. about that. There you go. Um, I have to ask about the makeup here and in particular, do you have a favorite phase of Charlie Manx? Um, uh, the whole process is really, you know, I was so grateful to be reunited with Joel Harlow um, and Richie Alonzo, who I've worked with before on the Trek movies, and uh, Cheryl Daniels, who does all of the wigs. I mean, I just love them. And so 
Um, I guess I would say that the longer I get to hang out with them in the makeup trailer, the sort of, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that I love the four hour version. So I, I'd say let's let's dial it into like the middle, like the hour 45 version. You know what I mean? Where we get to really hang out. Maybe we, we get to listen to a whole podcast or a whole like episode of something and then talk about it. And then I go to work rather than listening to like a whole season of a podcast. And then I go to work, which also happens. Have you ever um, tried to use that aging face app thing? Do you turn into old Charlie Manx when you when I don't you use know, that? but maybe we could employ some of that technology if we get to do another season. Save That's time. Actually, yeah, save some time. Charlie's pretty dashing at about 55. That's yeah, he's got a second, couple. The second, right? I think the he's second. He's got a couple streaks too. of gray. Yeah. yeah. It's, kinda, it's pretty cool. He's, that's kind too, of my favorite Charlie Manx. Yeah, I agree. He's like 60. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he's. I think he's 65 at that time. Yeah, and he's 65. sort of like. He's God, he's, yeah, he's a yeah. silver fox. He reminds me of my neighbor growing up. Yeah. It's, it's good. And he seems a little over everything. Yeah. And, uh, like, he, it's kind of my favorite. It's yeah. my favorite version of him. He's the most distinguished version yes. of himself at that yes. age, I think. It's true. Solid choices. Ashley, one of my favorite things about uh, Vic in this, and also your performance, too, is you are one of few that gets to interact and have your own relationship and chemistry with the entire ensemble. And really, every Correct. single one of them does stand out. But is there any kind of relationship you've fostered through the role that just went to places or brought something out of you that surprised you? Oh, gosh. R honestly, every single actor and uh, the entire cast has just been not only brought out different parts of Vic, but different, I've learned different things from each person that I've worked with. Um, Zach, like watching, I mean, watching Zach's work, I've spoken about that a million times, but also watching just the, now I'm talking about you in front of you, but just his kindness and the, the clarity with which he kind of uh, conducts himself on set and um, how he engages the crew and and the content as well. So that was really amazing. Jakar and I just, I mean, we're like best friends off screen as well. Um, Virginia, who plays my mom, is just, she's a masterclass in acting. And Eben, who plays my dad, he's like... I mean, I honestly sometimes forget the rest of the set when I'm working with him. I think the family dynamic stuff is something that's really stuck with me and affects me most as an actor. And then obviously Dari, who plays Bing, just watching him, he's such a kind human as well. And just um, seeing the kind of polarities that he plays with with his character is just fascinating. So I'm lucky. This is going to seem like a weird detail to harp on, but every single time your eye bleeds, I am convinced that like when <laughs> I get allergies and I rub my eye, I'm going to look like that. Does it throw you off? And actually with you with the nails too, I always think about oh, the, the little nails. things that you're not used to having on you on a daily basis. <laughs> Do things like that kind of throw you off? It makes me really like, I can't understand women who like <laughs> choose that for themselves because it complicates <laughs> everything. Like, Opening a soda can, yeah, is a yeah, yeah. like trying to send an email where I'm I like clickety clacketing it's so on funny. my phone, like, and I'd be like, "It's so weird." <laughs> it is uh, unbuttoning my shirt or buttoning my shirt. Going oh, to the bathroom God. is like, it is truly. I just try to avoid it at all costs and just don't drink anything. It's bizarre. I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's a whole litany of uh, of obstacles that present themselves with those fake nails on that I never had to deal with before this uh, this show. <laughs> Oh, man. Does the bloody eye freak you out at all? Well, you know what? Putting it in, I actually, it's really strange. For some reason, eyes just, it, it makes me nauseous every time. I have to sit there a couple of moments in the chair. And I don't know what it is. It's just like a hypersensitivity towards eyeball stuff or something. But the the, uh, the contact guy said it happens for most people. It's a scleral lens, so it's not just a contact. It goes through, it goes over the entire eye. But um, I'm a terrible, I'm allergic to 49 out of 56 possible Australian airborne allergens. So I kind of look like that when I'm in Australia, which is unfortunate seeing as it's where my family live. <laughs> I feel your pain. Yeah. Everyone that I'm with today was getting a dose of me sneezing a hundred times this morning. Um, I did get the wrap up sign, but one other thing I really wanted to bring up was just how much Jakara stands out here. Oh, and then so isn't she incredible? she's just electric. And when I see someone like that in a show, I have to look up everything they've done before so I could find yeah. more work. And she's Nothing. new to the scene. So how did you find her? Well, it's funny. I um, She made a series of uh, YouTube videos um, as uh, her alter ego, Sailor J, they popped up on my Facebook
Facebook feed. And if you haven't checked them out, you really should. The first one is Contouring 101. Um, and it's genius. genius. Yeah. She is so smart and hysterical, and they're just really really brilliant satirical little things and i became obsessed with her watched all of her videos and um just thought she was kind of brilliant and so wanted to meet her um and so said to the casting people like she's never done anything before but i get this feeling she might be great can we audition her um she came in and auditioned and lo and behold blew everyone's socks off and um got the part she is phenomenal. I lie. I have one more question. Do you guys ever play Scrabble together for fun? And if you do, who wins? We've never played Scrabble never. together we for fun. We should do that at the next rap serious? party. Come on. No. I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't risk playing Jakara. Yeah. You know? Who knows how much research he's done into the parts. <laughs> You've got to look up all the uh, the two uh, the two letter words like yeah. QI. That's a good one. Don't tell her about that one. How do you pronounce that? Key. I'm not gonna try. All I have to key? do is play it in word, words with friends, and I'm key, good. Key, key, I would right? say key. key. That's what I was gonna guess. Let's go with key. If you guess the same and we're both wrong, I'll feel better about okay. myself. So all thank right. you. All right, great. Thank you guys so much for your time today. Everybody out there, if you're not watching Nosferatu right now, it is on AMC, 10 Night Central on Sundays. It's great. You don't want to miss it. I'm going to go queue up the audio book as well. Guys, again, thank you for being here. Have a great Comic-Con. To everybody thank out there, you. like and share this video and stay tuned because we're going to have more Comic-Con coverage coming your way real soon.